giant piece of madrone burl. Madrone burl is a spectacular wood. There's uh, some exquisite figure inside of this stuff. And you can tell by the figure on the outside what's going on on the inside. And that's pretty much true of most woods. Whatever's going on on the outside is indicative of the grain pattern that you'll see on the inside. Now this is a, a beautiful piece, but unfortunately by the time I got it, it was at a, a, a burl cutter's yard. It had been sitting outside in the sun and the rain for years. So it, it's pretty much a damaged piece. It already has a lot of dry rot to it. But um, since I got it for free, I'm going to try and make a sculpture out of it. Now, let me show you what a, a nice piece of Madrone Burl can look like. Let's walk inside the shop and check this out. This is my shop over here. It's 2,200 square feet. Uh, my wife and I bought this property back in 1981, and the original owners used this for, for horses. So it's a one acre property. Uh, the center building was a barn. I remodeled that into a wood shop, and then I expanded onto the, the right side and then onto the left side. I've also built my wood shed over there, which houses my, my wood collection. I used to be in the lumber business. And I've also built a two-story gallery where I've got a lot of my finished pieces on display. So let's go in the shop and see what the inside looks like. Now let me show you a really nice slab of Madrone Burl. This is a beautiful piece of Madrone Burl. It's very rare to see a piece of Madrone Burl this size without cracks in it. <laughs> if you've ever worked with, with Madrone, it's a very unstable wood. It's uh, similar to olive wood in that respect, in that it's, it's a gorgeous wood, but in order to dry it, to bring it down to a moisture content of say 8%, uh, and have it not crack is ex extremely difficult. I got this from a, um, a wood sawyer up in Oregon. And he had a process where he would take the, the raw burl, he would boil it in water to release some of the bound water, and then he had a giant, uh, like a stainless steel autoclave. <coughs> so he'd take this stuff, put it onto a forklift, load it into the autoclave, and then he would kiln dry it very slowly. And he had the process dialed in. He knew all the temperatures, all the drying times, so he could dry this wood and essentially not crack it. And you can see there's just some spectacular figure in here. It's um, not something that I would recommend cleaning, but it will scrape well. You can see we're getting some, some nice shavings off of there. And in a moment, I'll take this outside and put some, some naphtha on here. And you can see that the solvent will, will really illuminate that grain. A lot of these diff difficult woods, uh, they won't plane very well. They're difficult to surface with a hand plane, but just a simple card scraper. You can buy a card scraper for, I don't know, seven or eight bucks, maybe nine bucks for a card scraper. The steel is about a 32nd of an inch thick. As long as you, you polish this edge and polish the two sides, you can come back and put a burr on there and, and produce some, some very nice shavings with that stock. Let's take it outside and uh, see what that figure looks like. What I'm going to do is to apply some, some naphtha. This is a mild solvent. I can soak this onto the wood and it will really illuminate that grain and then it'll, it'll flash off and dry relatively quickly. So check this out. Look at that burl. Gorgeous wood. This has some spectacular figure in there. Uh, beautiful curly figure, 
a lot of uh, cluster burls, some of the smaller bird's eyes, some really nice curly figure, and then also this type of muscle curl up in here. Just a beautiful, beautiful wood. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got it on tape. There you go. There you go, Blair. This is